So I'm interviewing Kieran Legrice, um, who is a, a teacher and a professor at Pacific uh, Graduate Institute in California, and who will be the Zurich Lecture Series speaker in 2022. And I want to introduce him to our audience, the audience of ISAP and anyone else interested in attending the lecture series, which will take place in the first weekend of October uh, 2022. And the Zurich Lecture Series is an annual event at ISAP uh, in Zurich. And uh, for that purpose, we select uh, an outstanding scholar, contributor to uh, the field of analytical psychology, um, who is um, prepared to deliver lectures and to write a book for this occasion. And the book is published by Chiron Publications and the lectures take place in Zurich. So um, next year, we are very, very pleased to have Kieran um, coming uh, to Zurich to deliver his lectures, um, which are going to be titled uh, The Cosmological Dimension of Individuation, Astrology and Alchemy as a Guide to Psycho-Spiritual Transformation. It's a long and complex title, Kieran. Um, but before we um, try to unpack that a little bit for our audience, I'd just like to ask you a few questions about yourself, where you come from, how did you get to where you are? You're born in England in uh, uh, Nottinghamshire um, and uh, arrived to Ojai, California. What a journey. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, sure. Um, well, first, thank you, Murray, for, for the invitation. Thanks for this opportunity to, to speak with you today. I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to the Zurich Lectures uh, next year. Um, yeah, it's been quite a journey for me, as you said, from, from Nottinghamshire, my, the closest city to my hometown is Nottingham, uh, which is in the Midlands, uh, in England. Um, that's where I grew up. I studied um, undergrad at the University of Leeds, which is in the north of England. And, and that was in the early 90s. I did uh, philosophy and psychology there. Um, I then found myself for, for several years working in computing. I was a computer programmer. Um, so my uh, academic career didn't really begin in earnest until later, uh, some, some years later <clears throat> in the early 2000s. Um, and the book actually that, I'm, uh, uh, that I've, I've written for, to go with the lecture series is to do with a, a, a transformation I a crisis I went through in moving from my career as a computer programmer into what I would uh, eventually do now, uh, lecturing and writing in and around Jungian psychology. So I, I went through quite a profound um, encounter with the unconscious, uh, you, you might say, and that is the, the topic of my book, which I'll get on to a little later. Um, so, so, yeah, I was working as a computer programmer, and then I began writing what was to become The Archetypal Cosmos, which is my first book. I began work on that in uh, 1999, and at the time, I, I was on a break from work, and I was traveling in the U.S., uh, and really it was a, a kind of intellectual uh, revelation for me at the time, and I was getting all these ideas to do with astrology uh, astrology and the way that uh, the psyche and the cosmos are uh, interrelated closely connected in fact perhaps arising from a, a, a kind of uh, underlying ground it gives how them did, a, how a, did that a interest how did that interest come to you from computer programming to yeah yeah well i mean I'd, as I said, I, I'd been studying philosophy and psychology. I got into astrology, first of all, when I was 16, almost 17. It's very young, uh, very young. And um, it, it occurred alongside a, a, an, an initial spiritual awakening. I was having several quite powerful spiritual experiences in my late teens and early 20s. And that kind of went hand in hand with an initial exposure to astrology. I was just getting books from the library and buying them from the local bookstore. And I just really got engrossed 
mm. in astrology in my late teens. And alongside that, I was, I was reading Jung then pretty extensively uh, when I was in Leeds um, in the summer vacations. I'd go and get all the collected works from the local library and just really got steeped in Jung uh, at, at the time. So I think I, I came out of a loosely new age background. Um, mm. My my upbringing was very ordinary uh, in in many respects. I lived in a coal mining town in the north of Nottinghamshire, uh, and I didn't really have any religious uh, background. You know, just kind of a vague uh, Christianity. But mostly my life was was pretty secular. But then um, my father married an American woman um, when I was sixteen, and she was very much into uh, healing and. Uh, crystals and all manner of new age things. And I, I think it was through that exposure that I learned a little bit more about astrology. And she had some books that I was able to look at. And I got curious about my own astrology chart. You know, I think we all tend to know what our sign is, our sun sign, you know, and I was, I'm Scorpio and that always resonated with me, but I was curious to discover what my rising sign was, where my moon was, and all the planets are in a one or other sign mm -hmm. and so I kind of got sucked into learning about my chart uh, and, it, and it was uh, something of a revelation I, I didn't I, I wasn't really ever skeptical about astrology it was just kind of very a very numinous uh, experience discovering my chart mm -hmm. and um, I became more self-reflectively critical I, I think later on when I was you know, further down my, my academic path. But at the time, it was just, you know, wow, this is a revelation. This is something that could tell me, uh, give me deep insights into my, my life path, what I'm here for, um, the meaning of life, and so forth. So it, it was very, very powerful initial exposure. Um, but I, I wasn't really able to act on that interest. You know, I, I'd gone through university and I needed uh, to earn money and so on, so I, I got a like <laughs> a career as it as it were in in computing, and and that served me for a few years. But really, I I wanted to work in and around that psychology, transpersonal psychology. I've been reading a lot of Ken Wilber and Stan Groff and Michael Washburn and those kinds of books well, as well. And so to I, the uh, California Institute of Integral Studies. That's where yes. that's the hotbed of that. That that's room, right. Yeah. Room. Yeah. And, and, and that's where I eventually uh, ended up after I'd been through this quite, quite profound crisis in the early 2000s. And my way out of that, or one aspect of that was to <clears throat> change my life direction. And I ended up moving to San Francisco uh, and studying, as you said, at the California Institute of Integral Studies, CIAS, mm -hmm. known as for short. Um, and I studied their uh, philosophy, cosmology, and consciousness. Um, it was a great, great faculty in place there at the time, still is. Uh, Richard Tarnas, yes. um, who wrote The Passion of the Western Mind, I'm sure will be known to, to many uh, yes. viewers and listeners. Uh, Stanislav Groff, who I just mentioned, the Czech American transpersonal psychologist, was lecturing there too. Um, Brian Swim, prominent cosmologist. So I I kind of got just the subject areas, uh, just the kind of expertise that, that I needed to help me write, write my book. And I'd started this, the writing project on the archetypal cosmos in 99, uh, and I studied at CIAS between 2004 and 2009. So I, it, it kind of really helped me understand more thoroughly uh, the, the topics I was interested in. Uh, gave me a really solid grounding in, in, in Jung, I think, uh, the history of Western worldviews, um, Friedrich Nietzsche I studied, uh, uh, Platonism and transpersonal psychology. So all, all these ideas and influences uh, helped shape what became the archetypal cosmos, which I, I published uh, in 2010. Um, You've written that, a lot. You've written. A, you're you're a writer. I mean, you like to write. Apparently, um, <laughs> I looked at your uh, CV, and there are lots and lots of uh, books and articles, editing projects. Among them, uh, a project called Jung on Astrology. Um, so you discovered that Jung was also very interested in astrology along the way. I guess probably early on, but. 
How interested was Jung in astrology, do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think it, it, it's, it's one of those things that Jung never didn't publish uh, a collected works, a single volume dedicated to astrology in the same way that he did for alchemy, where you've got uh, three, uh, you know, three plus uh, uh, volumes and the collected works that are singularly dedicated to alchemy. There's no such work on astrology yet. Um, his interest was lifelong. I, the, I think there's a, a remark Jung made to Freud in 1912 that his evenings were taken up largely with the study of astrology. And uh, it informed also his understanding of synchronicity, meaningful coincidence between yeah. things that happen in the world and things that happen, uh, or the, the experience of inner meaning. Uh, and that's really what a, a, astrology is to do with, external the external phenomena of the positions of the planets and how they're related to each other and how that corresponds synchronistically in, in Jung's view with uh, archetypal constellations, configurations in, in the psyche. And that, that's what really interested me. And I, yeah, so even though there's nothing formal written by Jung uh, or very little formal written by Jung on astrology, it, there's mentions of astrology scattered throughout the collected works uh, and especially in um, second volume of Jung's letters after the Second World War. Mm. So it really was a, a key interest of his. And that's really how that, that book came about. I co-edited Jung on Astrology with Saffron Rossi, my colleague at Pacifica Graduate Institute, uh, where I now teach. And we just went through the collective works and went through the Jung seminars and letters and just tried to organize um, in, in, well, in four parts all Jung's um, writings on astrology. So it's quite illuminating to see that. Uh, Did you together. find that his, his thinking about astrology developed over a period of time? Is there? Uh, yeah, it, 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 I mean, it, it developed. It wasn't consistent. I mean, <laughs> I think maybe we see this in, in Jung in, in many areas of his thought where, you know, he's grappling with different ideas and entertaining different theories. And that was certainly true of astrology. And I, I don't think he, he ever settled on a, 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 like a single explanation of astrology, for example. He, he considered at one time, uh, is there a physical causal mechanism for astrology or is it synchronistic, a causal? Uh, and I think he tended more in, in that direction. But yeah, there were maybe five, six, seven different kinds of theories that he was considering. Um, but, but he did use it. He used it as a, an aid to... Uh, therapy to, to uh, yeah. analysis um, and said certain cases where things were getting stuck, he could get the, the, the client's astrology chart and look at the what are called transits, what, what's happening right now in, in a person's life, where the planets are right now, and he used that uh, to get insight into the, the dynamics of uh, that person's unconscious. So, and that's kind of the way that I've um, come to use astrology uh, as well. But you also apply it to history, don't you? Like uh, Tarnas does um, the epochs, uh, eras. Um, Jung was very fascinated by the age of Pisces following the age of, uh, I mean, the age of Aquarius following the age of Pisces. Right, and, yeah. And uh, we're entering into that. Um, um, that's also a part of your work, uh, applying astrology to the study of historical patterns, cultural patterns. Developed. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, I mean, I, I think less so than Richard Tarnas. I mean, he really made that his uh, his central focus in the book Cosmos and Psyche, yeah. which came out in 2006. So that's all about um, cultural history and the way that the, the movements, the, the cycles and interrelationships of the planets can illuminate different eras, different epochs, uh, as you said. And I, I've certainly been influenced by that and uh, considered that. But my main focus, I, I suppose, is how one can use archetypal astrology uh, to illuminate individuation, um, particularly episodes of psycho-spiritual transformation, to, to, to go back to the, the title of the lectures, yes. how, how you can, um, but I think astrology gives us a framework for understanding the shifting dynamics of, of archetypes as, as they manifest and mm -hmm. become activated in the unconscious. And uh, as you will know, I mean, people are going through major transformations and one sense of identity is, is, itself being changed, it can be a very turbulent 
period and and hard to have any kind of perspective on what's happening so i i found astrology very helpful in in, in that it offers a, an external frame of reference i.e the, the planets in the sky and that enables us to understand um, more deeply um, more clearly what is happening to us personally psychologically uh, and so that's uh, at least in part what my lectures are going to be going to touch on so you're more interested in the applications to individuation of individual people rather than the individuation of culture, the evolution of culture. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I mean, I maybe hesitate that I'm more interested because I see the two as very related. Mm-hmm. Um, and in the book that I, I'm writing mm-hmm. or have written, actually, alongside these lectures, um, I look at my own experience of psycho-spiritual transformation, but in the context of the evolution of Western civilization, the evolution of consciousness, uh, or the evolution of the ego. The ego is the um, kind of basis of the modern sense of selfhood and how uh, where we are as a culture, as a civilization, um, kind of pushes us towards uh, individuation and psycho-spiritual transformation. So the book is about my experience, but it's in relation to all our, all our, uh, or at least potentially all our, all our lives, and uh, and the kind of deep spiritual transformation that we're, we're passing through collectively. So I, I do see the two as very interrelated. Do you, do you link uh, astrology and the pandemic, the COVID pandemic? Yeah, yeah. I I wrote an article on that. Um, I was actually due to give a talk uh, for Pacifica Pacifica Graduate Institute, where, where I, I teach. Um, there was a like an open house intro day um, scheduled for I think March twentieth of twenty twenty, which is I think pretty much when the, the pandemic hit, uh, particularly yeah. in the US, it was a little earlier elsewhere. But um, so in the end, that was about the first thing that went wholly online, and we did the uh, the intro day online. And my my talk, um, I changed topic at the last minute. I thought I've got to speak on the pandemic, yeah. so I looked at where the planets were in the sky in March 2020 and just uh, did a like a 40 45 minute talk on, on that and it's quite illuminating um, mm. uh, you know, to, to say briefly because I know we don't have much time but it, it there was a, a, a three planet alignment a conjunction so Jupiter Saturn and Pluto they were all closely together in the sky and that, that's quite rare uh, so I interpreted that and, and this year, we're, we've got a Saturn-Uranus combination. So I've uh, been following along with, with that as well. I mean, it, it, it helps. It, it doesn't lessen the suffering of life to know astrology, but it helps to give meaning, I, I, I think, to what we're going through. And therefore, you can participate more uh, with more acceptance, perhaps, more understanding uh, in, in the events that a thrust on us that we obviously no one no one chose this and it's been so difficult for so many people but to have that framework uh, I, I think can be very very therapeutic what kind of meaning do you see in the in the pandemic coming out of this uh, experience worldwide experience um, we all share it every country in the world every population uh, uh, it's a shared experience among humanity um, can we extract meaning from this uh, event using the astrological perspective? Yeah, I mean, one of the things I hope to talk about, I, I plan to talk about in the, uh, the lecture series, one of my lectures is going to be on Pluto. Uh, um, uh, <coughs> Pluto archetype, the idea in astrology is that each, archetypal astrology is that each planet is associated with a specific archetypal principle so the planet or the dwarf planet pluto is related to the, uh, an archetype called pluto and and that in Jungian terms has a lot to do with um kind of the uncivilized underworld of the psyche uh instincts instinctual power and compulsion and, and profound episodes of death rebirth like the freudian id or Schopenhauerian idea of the will or Nietzschean idea of the will to power. They all have something to do with Pluto. It's kind of not one of them, but but all of them in different ways. So like Hades and uh, Pan and Dionysus, that kind of pagan elemental cathonic energy is, is to do with Pluto. 
Um, so that's one of the things I hope to, to look at uh, in the lectures. And as I mentioned, the pandemic occurred during a Saturn-Pluto conjunction. So that means that the Pluto archetype and all those things I've just mentioned come into relationship with the Saturn archetype. And Saturn is to do with uh, contraction, limitation, traditionally uh, suffering and difficulties, hardships, and um, pain and uh, the, the, the problematic side of life, the, the limitations of the shadow, we might say. You know, Jung described the shadow as that kind of narrow passageway. It's very oppressive. Uh, morality and judgment and um, guilt and inferiority are also to do with Saturn. Um, so you, what you can do in astrology is look at what you know, two planets are together in the sky. Well, that, that tells us that those two archetypes are them, themselves together. They're mutually activating and stimulating each other. Uh, so Pluto's Saturn periods tend to be ones of historical contraction, like the world wars began under Saturn Pluto. Um, the AIDS pandemic was under a Jupiter Saturn Pluto, the previous one in uh, early 80s. And um, you can look throughout history and see these episodes of grave, profound, weighty events that coincide with Saturn Pluto. And it serves to break us down, uh, to break down the defenses of the ego. Um, uh, to uh, It's kind of like a pressure cooker uh, experience. Um, I think that's what which we're was served, served by lockdown and so on and so on. Uh, to break down the ego and also to fortify us, to, to build strength and backbone and moral courage and gravitas and all those kind of things. Do you think, uh, is that what we need to, to face the ecological crisis, the global warming crisis, which seems even greater yeah. than the pandemic huh, for the future? Well, I mean, I, I'm sure it will. Well, at least I hope, <laughs> I hope it will prove to be because then we'll have emerged from the pandemic and the, I hope that that will happen, of course. But yeah, I think uh, maybe some of the very qualities that have been elicited by the uh, coronavirus pandemic will be ones that we need to face the ecological crisis. You know, yeah. Being more resourceful, um, uh, less less flights, less consumerism, and uh, those kinds of things. So I think, yeah, I think it maybe is like a uh, an initiation into more of the qualities that we'll need going forward to deal with the a threat of ecological change. Saturn is also related to wisdom, I think, isn't it? I mean, that sort of yeah. wisdom of one's um, limitations, death, um, the heavy things of life. And, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's uh, the, the shadow side of life, it, or at least the personal shadow in the sense of inferiority and judgment and so forth. Um, but, and it's also the, the Senex, you know, the the old, um, the, the no negation principle, the no response to life resistance and that kind of thing. But equally, it's the wise old man, uh, as you said. So maturity, maturity through an encounter with death or through an encounter with suffering, that, that kind of um, worldly wisdom that comes from having faced life squarely and uh, learned from one's own hard knocks, you know, uh, uh, so that, that's that's the positive side of Saturn. That's what humanity, we hope, will come out with, out of this with. Um, well, you're coming to Zurich uh, in a uh, little less than a year from now. And um, um, what are you looking forward to? Have you been to Zurich before? <laughs> I haven't, no, um, which is perhaps strange given that my life has been Indeed, yes. uh, built, built around uh, Young's work and I'm, I've been chair or now I'm currently co-chair of the Jungian and Archetypal Studies program at, at Pacifica Graduate Institute. So I'm, you know, it's one of the foremost places to study Jung in the yeah. world. There, there are very few, as you, as you know. Yeah. Um, and we, we just look at Jung academically. It's not uh, an analyst training program. It's not, we don't do yeah. therapy or anything like that. So uh, we... Uh, but so I think it's one of the very few places that, that does that. But yeah, I, I myself have uh, not been to, I've never been to Switzerland. So I, I am uh, very much looking forward to that. And I hope circumstances allow uh, that, that to happen. I, I believe they will. Um, so yeah, I, um, and, and just to, to speak to the audience in Zurich, um, you know, I think that's going to be an, an amazing opportunity. I'm very excited to share 
what I know of, of archetypal astrology, because I, I think the potential to apply that to, to therapy analysis and, well, I mean, even outside of therapy and analysis, that's been my way just to try and find my own path, my own individuation path and use astrology and alchemy and other like Gnosticism and other perspectives to, to guide that. So I think there's uh, a lot to be mined from archetypal astrology. And, and I, you know, I think on the back of Richard Tarnas's work and other scholars, I, I feel that there's great potential in astrology going forward. Um, will you come with your wife and your son? Are you coming as a family or do you come alone? Or? Uh, I, it's in school uh, time, so uh, I, I don't know how that yeah. or how that will play out. I, my wife uh, intends to come, so uh, hopefully we'll have uh, babysitters in place, and uh, <laughs> and that can happen. So, yeah, that should be good. I mean, we we want to go to the. Um, my wife's a painter, an artist, so we, we want to go to the uh, Paul Clay, uh, Paul Clay's house. I think he's in Bern. So we, if there's time, we're, we're going to take the train from Zurich to Bern. Yeah, just one hour. There's a Paul Clay Museum in Bern. Yeah, yeah. It's near where I live. I live in Thun, not far from Bern. So oh, really? Oh, oh we great. We can be together great. out here somewhere in the mountains. <laughs> well, it's, I certainly look forward to your coming, uh, Kieran. And uh, um, I think the, the topic you've chosen uh, um, to speak to us about and also your um, personal experience will be very attractive to the audience and uh, inspiring uh, to hear your story and, uh, and also your um, intellectual um, um, perspectives on time and history and movement of culture. It all goes together. The individual isn't separated from culture and we evolve together and, Perhaps this astrological perspective can help us hold these pieces together, the individual and communities and culture, world culture, in a piece. Yeah, I mean, I agree. And, and to come back to the, uh, as you said, my complex sounding title of my, of my talks, um, one thing I, I hope to convey in the cosmological dimension of individuation is, is the idea that, you know, I, I think we, we tend to construe our, individuation process somewhat personally, individually, as separate yeah. in, in some sense from what's happening out there, not only in the culture, but in terms of, like, uh, of the universe. But of yeah. course, you know, our individuation takes place in that context. So I, so I think astrology brings in that perspective that we, um, we each have a unique relationship physically to the planet, and, and that is somehow consistently and coherently correlated with our relationship to the archetype. So it, it, it gives us a sense of participation in a cosmic reality, not just our own uh, intrapsychic inward journeys, but, but we are participating with, with powers and principles that are, are there in the universe or in the, the deeper ground of the universe as much as in the psyche. So that's something of what I want to convey. Lovely, lovely. Um... I really look forward to it and uh, hope that the pandemic will have um, at least decreased enough so that uh, also other guests can come into Zurich for your lectures. Um, and also I'm sure it will be available on Zoom as well as on site, but uh, it'll be very exciting to have you here and thank you for accepting the offer. We really- I'm really excited to come. Thank, thank you for the invitation.